Hello my soccer universe, Serie A is back and is back with a bang. Despite it starting slowly on Saturday where Inter dropped and Milan gained a point, but then on Sunday Verona beat Napoli 3-0. It is already complete mayhem at Napoli. With Conte being of course unhappy, the performances were not good when they won the championship to start with a win in Verona. This might go downhill very very quick and then you also have the Osimhen situation where it's not clear will he stay, will he go. That's one to watch as well. Then on the same evening, we had Roma only getting a paltry nil-nil draw at Cagliari and were at times a little bit lucky for that one. Lazio though against a not so good looking Venezia 3-1. And on Monday we had two real lopsided results with Atalanta going to Lecce and completely dominating them. Then it was a 4-0 and then Juventus also looking surprisingly well in a 3-0 win over Como. Yes, newly promoted, but that was also a very promising start for Juventus. Now before we briefly talk about select games I just want to tell you how I'm planning to do it this season for my Serie A reviews. I will give you a kind of a short opener then I will talk about select games. I will pull the focus on the Milan games because that's my team in Serie A and I'm watching every Milan game so there is a little bit extended and then we look a little bit at overall trends within the league as well whether how it develops but that might be a little bit more sporadically. Just a heads up I'm going on vacation tomorrow for two weeks which actually means that I will not be able to make full review videos. I might do shorts and punch them together into a short video but let's see how this will go. But let's dive right into the action. The first game that I've selected to talk about is Genoa 2 Inter 2. This was a game that Inter actually largely dominated however they were undone by defensive mistakes. We had Sommer clearing a ball not quite nicely putting it onto the foot of Voljako and he puts it in makes it 1-0 for Genoa. However Thuram 10 minutes later then equalizes for Inter and Inter were much the better team. Yes Lotaro looked a little bit leggy and so on but you know he had a long summer. In the 84th minute Thuram makes it 2-1 and you thought this is now it for Inter. They started the season with a win However, Bisek handles the ball. It is a penalty. Junior Messias, former Milan player, steps up, sees his penalty saved by Sommer. However, it bounces back to him and he can convert it. It was not an easy finish, makes it 2-2. There were quite some scenes of joy in Genoa after that one and Inter will feel a little bit aggrieved for dropping points that early in the season. What can I tell you about Milan's 2-2 draw with Torino? It was a total letdown for me, you know, coming off a last game where last just had lost to Salzburg. I was going home hoping to at least see Milan get a win because that's what I expect when you play Torino, a team that you haven't lost to in almost 40 years at home in the league. Yes, they lost last season in the cup against Torino, but I came home and they're 1-0 down and deservedly so. I mean, the own goal by Chaw was clumsy as can be. This was probably the most avoidable own goal that I've seen in a long time. Well, maybe the Turkey one against Portugal was also highly avoidable, but you know what I mean. The way he cannot get his feet sorted and he tries to clear it and then it goes in. Weird stuff. Zabata, who was absolutely brilliant, should have probably made it 2-0. Yes, there was a Leao chance in there as well, but you know, um, Torino Torino looked better and then Torino actually did something really convenient for them. They just sat back and said let Milan come to us. I also have to say the lineup choices by Fonseca. I mean he went not for the best players, he went for the fittest players but playing Jovic up front, Jukovic and Pulisic in the middle, uh, Salemakas on the side instead of Theo. I don't dislike Salemakas but he didn't look good at all. So yeah it was all not quite gelling and then there was one attack by Torino where they completely took the Milan defense apart. Shea Adams had come on meanwhile as well and he and Lazaro combined cross in and nobody picks up Zapata. More or less alone in front of Magnon makes it 2-0 and I'm thinking oh man what an crap evening that is. Although a crucial change in the game already happened before that goal. Fonseca brought on Reinders, uh, Teo Hernandez and Morata and I have to say Morata immediately you saw there was a whole lot of energy coming from him. He was fouled for a penalty that was not really a penalty foul. He worked tirelessly and suddenly there was a focal point up front that Jovic could not provide. Why do we give Jovic the number nine? In any case, it seemed like it's all fizzling out, but then he also brings a Musso and Oka 4 and suddenly the team kind of starts to click and it is Morata then who converts across very nicely to make it 1-2 just in the 89th minute. There was a huge stoppage time because there were a few VAR reviews, especially for the penalty on Morata and 
they take their chances. Musso with a nice cross in and Okafor converts, makes it 2-2 at this point. I really thought that Milan is gonna win this game even. Theo had the chance. Just compose yourself a little bit more. In the end you have to say, yeah, I like the attitude coming back. I think the lineup at the beginning was not the right one. There's a whole lot to learn from this game. And yes, you have to get this down quickly because letting a few points slide at the beginning of the, of the season is not what you need if you wanna go for a Scudetto run. So better get this going. This was a narrow escape and maybe next time Play the best players and play Alvaro Morata up front. This made sense suddenly. And maybe give a start to Okafor instead of Jovic. Just saying, he would deserve it. Now let's talk about the big one. Elas Verona 3, Napoli 0. I actually have to say that while a super dominant, Napoli actually created quite a few chances in the first half, especially one by Kvas Kelia where he got a shot blocked. That may have gone in and then the game goes in a completely different direction. He has to come off then with a slight knock. Seemingly it's nothing really serious. But in the second half, <laughs> Elas more or less strike on the first chance. It's a Lazovic cross in that Livramento kind of tapped and guides into the net and then all hell broke loose and it was every shot a goal for Verona more or less. Yes, Napoli tried. I think there was a chance for Anguissa, but they were so toothless. And then Duda serves up Muschera and it's 2 minutes 75th and in stoppage time Muschera adds a third one. Counter fuming. While he said it's his responsibility, he was also having a go at his players. And you know exactly where this is going. I'm not sure if we will see Conte even at Christmas at Napoli. This is gonna be a big one right there. I said it already in my preview and it's already hitting explosive levels after round one. Watch that space. Lazio took on newly promoted Venezia and I really have, have to say for once the Venezia jerseys to me don't look that great. I think it's mostly down to the sponsor but also you know it's a little bit too templatey. That will be a part for the Serie A jersey review whenever that will drop. Actually Venezia took the lead in the third minute through Anderson and you thought oh is there another upset in the cards here but Tati Castellanos very quickly equalizes and it was a mistake by Austrian Svoboda who then was also involved in the penalty that he gave away in the 44th minute where Lazio already had had some chances before that as well. And this is a Lazio without Immobile, without Luis Alberto, but seemingly kind of seems to work. Sakani converts the penalty, it's 2-1, and then in the 81st minute, it was an Altare own goal. It didn't make it 3-1, but they were very good value for the win. However, I have to say, Provedel very late on had a miracle save to keep Venezia out. Could have made the score a little bit tighter, but you know, against a promoted team, Lazio win this one relatively easy. At the same time, Roma played out a nil-nil draw in Cagliari and I gotta say, yes, Dybala is on his way out, which might add to Roma's worries. And, but overall, I mean, it was a more open game than I have expected from this one, with Cagliari having quite a few chances as well. In the end, no one can convert their chances. Dovbik, they tried to find him a few times, but you know, it's just not quite gelling yet. I think the jury is still out on how good this Roma team will be. However, at the moment, I think, Europa League might be the maximum for them. Maybe they get some new signings in, but even that will take some work. Monday evening was a time for lopsided results and Atalanta were really irresistible. Yes, they held Real Madrid in the UEFA Super Cup for a half, if you would like. And actually, when Real Madrid scored, it looked like more than Atalanta is going on there. All the frustrations there, they took off and it was just one-way traffic towards the Lecce goal. Brescianin in the 35th minute opens the scoring and Retegi had it in in the 45th minute and it was very scintillating in the second half. Retegi converts a penalty and then Brescianini also gets a brace and at that point it was really in the cards that Atalanta just gonna romp over Lecce. They take then a foot off the gas and it ends only 4-0 but that 4-0 is already enough to see them go top of the table after round one and we already see this Atalanta team is serious and yes, Cope Minus is about to leave, but we also know that Gasperini is very good in forming teams. It has always been consistency over an entire season that has let Atalanta down. But beside that, I think Atalanta is a really serious team. I would say a top four finish is definitely in there for them. 
And top four also has to be the goal for Juventus who beat Como 3-0. I have to say Como looked a little bit frazzled. Juventus actually looked quite good and Motta played the youth and Mbangula makes this run, makes it one in the 23rd minute. Vlahovic maybe had a very unlucky game because he missed chances, he scored a goal that was given offside and, and so on. Probably he's the only one that is not happy but other than that Timothy Weah just before the half makes it 2-0 for Juventus and then very late on Cambiasso as a third but I gotta say Juventus that looked rather convincing yes it's only promoted side but I think it's Como side will make some noise in Serie A but I think the first have to arrive in Serie A before we can go any further Let's talk the upcoming round. Milan have to play at Parma. We have Inter hosting Lecce. There I expect a whole lot of goals. Torino against Atalanta. Two teams that were over convincing and maybe Atalanta will do much better than what Milan did against Torino. Of course, all eyes need to be on Napoli's game against Bologna and Elas Verona get the next big team in Juventus. Can they make another miracle? Ah, Juventus looked a whole lot more settled than this Napoli side were. So yeah, this is it from me from Serie A for this week. I'm going on vacation now. As I said, I will probably watch the Milan game, although the early kickoff might not work in my favor. But let's see all about that. Let me know what you thought about this week in Serie A. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!